Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Public Void Geek. This is Sanam and today we are going to look into Firebase in-app messaging. It is quite similar to uh, the Firebase push notification or cloud messaging but not exactly the same. So the difference between cloud messaging or push notification uh, and in-app messaging is basically push notification is something that you can send to your users uh, even if the app is not opened or you want to give some notification to the user or to your users uh, whereas in-app messaging is something like a banner pop-up inside your application and this is uh, used probably to give uh, more con contextual uh, engagement with the user like you can do something like uh, maybe giving a special discount uh, to a user if he adds a particular product into the cart or if they combine multiple products in the cart you can give some sort of pop-up like if you open a uh, uh, PUBG mobile game uh, you see that there are multiple pop-ups initially when you open you see two or three pop-ups to purchase a cart or if you open um, any shopping app uh, maybe Amazon or something you will see sometimes maybe during festival season they will give you some sort of pop-up saying that this is a, a discount of 20% on clothing or 10% on disc, uh, on electronics so these kind of pop-ups that you want to give to the user once they open the app uh, these are called in-app messaging so we will look into this uh, using Firebase so I'll show you a sample in-app message um, using the old uh, Firebase authentication app that we did but for our tutorial we will be using a new project uh, just for the sake of showing it to you guys that how it looks I will send an in-app message and I'll be sending it on the test device and you can see it on the screen right now so I'll send it it has been sent so I've closed the app and now if I open the app again Within few seconds, we will see a pop-up message there. Uh, welcome, subscribe and join the community. And then there is a subscribe button. If I tap on subscribe button, it will take me to the URL that I have passed on. So I entered google.com. I should have put my channel URL, but it's okay. So google.com and then uh, you can see that user has been re redirected to google.com. You can send it to a particular URL or you can also send the user to particular uh, screen inside your app using the universal URLs right so that's what in-app messaging is guys so let's get started all right so we'll start with a single view application uh, we'll click on next and I'll call this one fire fire message hmm? or fire engage no fire message is okay bad in naming I guess so fire message and on desktop I guess is fine all right so Xcode is ready you just increase it increase the size of Xcode a little bit so in order to start with the in app messaging let's go and dive into some documentation and I'll open it over here and I'll bring on the other screen so if you go to the documentation um, it's right under cloud messaging that we did previously uh, in app messaging it's in beta version right now you can see B over here so it's in beta version that means the tutorial that I am making there is a possibility that uh, this might not work in future when it goes into production but uh, there won't be big changes now since it's not alpha release it's a beta release so it's close to the production and we can still use it but it's not recommended for the production ready apps right now I mean I would not suggest anything in beta to be used in a production ready app but you can prepare your apps for this and then once it goes into production when once Google makes it into production then you can probably use it in your production app as well so if you go into firebase in-app messaging it says you can use this to engage with your with your users uh, let them engage with the app right so there is the old uh, 
basically three things that we need one is connecting our app to firebase integrating the sdk and sending the so three th simple things so let's start with it if we go to get started it will tell us to install CocoaPods. So we already have CocoaPods. I have a video on how to install CocoaPods on your Mac machine. You can go and check it out. Uh, for this project, we will integrate the CocoaPods for, for this particular project. So we will add Firebase Core uh, CocoaPod. And you can see right over here, it is asking for two uh, CocoaPods. So let's start with that. I'll open my terminal. So here we are and I'll do CD into desktop and then file message and we are inside the right uh, directory now and all we need to do is pod in it once we do pod in it we are basically initializing the cocoa pods and we should have our pod file available and all we need to do is vi pod file and then go down here press i and just copy paste the two uh, cocoa pods that they have asked us to install these two uh, make sure that your firebase uh, cocoa pod is updated so you might have to run pod update on your system if you're already using firebase before in any project so for this project you will have to do pod update because it runs only on 5.6.0 and above so it should be mentioned somewhere here uh, the firebase uh, version itself should be 5.6.0 uh, should be mentioned I, I'm not sure it, it, they have mentioned it here or not but anyways so we'll add these two cocoa pods over here and escape you and then we'll close our Xcode project because we want it to be installed inside this particular project and we will open the XC workspace so I'll do pod install and it has downloaded it has installed everything and all we need to do now is open firebase message.xe workspace and i'll just try to run this project once to make sure that everything is compiled and everything is running smoothly if there are no errors that means it has been somewhat added into our project and let me just bring up the screen as well so here is the screen again it's a white screen and i don't like it to be white or black so i'll just change it to some other background color so that we know that our app is running smoothly right so we'll go to main.storyboard and inside the inspector i'll select this view and i'll change its color mm, something different okay let's try custom and i'll set it to which one this one is okay for now I guess it's a little bit soothing to realize not, not to change so okay I'll run this project now and we'll make sure that this is the correct app that we are working on and everything is working fine so there we go uh, firebase has been installed inside our app but it has not yet been configured or it has not been yeah it's not been configured uh, to the firebase system so we need to create a firebase project as well and then download the google service file add it to our uh, project so that our app can talk to the google server or the firebase server all right i'll bring this screen to the other desktop and we'll go to the console firebase console and we'll create a new project and i'll call this one firebase message or fire message that's what we call right you can keep it different as well there is no problem i'm just i just want to keep it same uh again for the analytics purpose uh, this country that you're selecting over here is just for the analytics purpose it has nothing to do with how your project will perform or how the database will work so here i've selected india right so this cloud fire store location uh, this is where um, you should only change this uh, if your project manager or if your app basically you know what you're doing here right because this is where uh, you decide which uh, region servers you want to use for your app 
uh, depending upon the feasibility and the network latencies and all those things. So for now, uh, India and this is default because we are not using Cloud Firestore right now. So I'll click on create project and we wait for a few seconds. Once the project is created, we will create the iOS application inside this project and then we will link this iOS application with our actual iOS application. Right, so click on continue and you can see here it says add an app to get started. So I'll start with an iOS app and it is asking for the bundle ID. I'll go back to my Xcode project. I'll click on this blue fire message uh, project basically and copy this bundle identifier. Go back to Firebase. I'll paste it over here. I'll click register my app or register app and then wait for a few minutes or a few seconds and it gives me google service hyphen info.plist. I'll download this, download it. So it's info hyphen four dot plist file. I'll click on next, pod in it, pod firebase core. Uh, you should have firebase core. We don't need it right now. Uh, yeah, we don't need this uh, Firebase score right now, but I'll anyways add it just for the safety. So I'll go back to Xcode. I'll go to pod file and I'll add Firebase score and remove this. So you don't need Firebase score for in-app messaging as you can see on the documentation, just Firebase is enough, but adding Firebase score is still okay. So I'll save this, I'll close this, stop the task. Uh, go back to terminal and do pod install again and everything should be same All right and I'll open firebase fire message.exe workspace I'll run the project so that everything is compiled and there are no issues will succeeded right so we have already completed this part at firebase SDK and initialize um, initialization code it's pretty much the same in all my Firebase videos. We have seen this. But anyways, we'll still continue to do this since it's a new project for us. So first thing is import Firebase. I'll copy this. I'll go back to our project, go to app delegate and right under import UI kit, I'll import the Firebase module as well or the Cocoa Pods as well. I'll do a command build and done. So command B is for command build and once you're done with that you'll copy this firebase app.configure and inside did finish launching with applications or with options um, we will just above the return true uh, line we will add this uh, line as well this line of code command save and i'll run this on my device but we haven't yet uh, copied the Google service hyphen info dot plist file. So I'll do that as well. I'll go to my downloads and I'll copy this info hyphen four dot plist file. So we need this file because it has all the configuration about our Firebase project. So I'll copy this, I'll put it under here and make sure that copy items if needed is selected and your target app is also selected. And click on finish. And once you have added this, just hit enter and remove any number after info if you have. So it should be Google service hyphen info dot plist. That's the file that, that should be there in your project if you're working with Firebase. And run the project now. Now your app should be able to communicate with the Firebase server. So I'll click on next. And it says checking if the app has communicated with our servers, you may need to uninstall and reinstall your app. So yes, sometimes you, you may have to uninstall and reinstall. But in my case, if I just uh, close the app and try to open it, usually it uh, works and it allows the, as you can see, I just close the app. I open the app and, it, and the communication uh, happened between the application and the Firebase server. It does take few minutes, so don't worry if it's spinning for maybe 20-30 seconds. So continue to console. So now our app has been uh, integrated with Firebase. Our device is communicating, our app is communicating to Firebase right now. 
so all we do is go to in-app messaging uh, one more thing guys uh, this in-app messaging uh, since it happens once the application is open right so it will only appear once so if you send one campaign in a day uh, if it has been opened once or basically you can say like this that your application will listen to firebase in-app messaging uh, once per day right so it like it's not like a notification that you can send every 10 minutes every 20, every 20 minutes or maybe every one hour you can keep sending push notifications and your device will still receive them whereas in-app messaging will only happen once per day it depends how you schedule them right so once it has been sent you are not allowed to even if you try to send it your app will not receive it so what we need to do is in order for us to test this we need to add our test device to firebase so that we can uh, manually pull out the in-app messaging from firebase and basically we can show it on demand on our device right so this is the console of uh, uh, in-app messaging on firebase so before we try to send any message or any in-app message let's first set up our device to receive the on-demand messages so that we can keep on testing uh, this thing right so if we go on to documentation you can see we have already completed all of this part and we don't need to so here you can see it says firebase version 5.6.0 or higher so this is what is required uh, for in-app messaging to work now here you can see uh, it says to conserve power firebase in-app messaging only retrieves messages from the server once per day right so while you are developing you might have to send it multiple times right so in that case you can set up a test device so how you set it up is pretty simple all you need to do is the steps are already mentioned over here you can follow the steps as per uh, firebase or you can follow the video as well i'll be doing here as well so it's pretty simple uh, we'll go to our product uh, make sure that xcode is highlighted or it is selected right now so xcode is open uh, you can see right over here it says xcode so we go into product and then we go into scheme and we click on edit scheme in edit scheme uh, by default you should be visiting this info section uh, and i'll go to argument section and you can see there is a section called argument passed on launch and click on plus this add icon or plus icon and copy this hyphen fir debug enabled if you copy this and you put it here and then hit enter and click on close now your app um, has the debugging option enabled from firebase so all the firebase debug messages will be visible in the console down here right so i will run this app now so that the fir debug enabled options will start uh, coming up and you can see a lot of communication is happening between device our app and the firebase and somewhere here uh, you can see that we have our device id as well something like this you can see firebase in-app messaging something like this so a uh, lot of these uh, comments or logs are getting printed on the console what we are worried about is this one we can probably do something like runtime with instance id we can copy this and we will put it right over here and then we can see uh, right over here this is the exactly same message so this is firebase in-app messaging uh, output or the log and my device id is this one after this id there is a device id mentioned over here i'll copy this device id I'll go back to my Firebase in-app messaging console and let's say my message is uh, welcome subscribe to my channel and let's set it to subscribe button and we can also do the action over here which i will set it to google.com for now right uh, don't click on next we are not yet done so what we need to do is after adding all of this 
um, I'm selecting the model you can change it to top banner as well or image only and I'll click on test on device now it is asking uh, no test device is configured add an instance ID so I'll paste the ID that I copied from export click on plus and click on test once you click on test you wait for a couple of seconds and you can see campaign is ready for testing so I'll bring this one here and then we close the app I'll just close it completely and then open the app again and we wait for a few seconds and you can see that welcome subscribe to my channel uh, pop up came up so I'll click on subscribe and it opened google.com as we uh, mentioned in our console right so I'll close this app I'll open firebase message again and the message will not be coming up now because we have not sent it again right and we can try to change uh, some of the layout over here as well if you want uh, so this background which is white is this one and we can change it to something maybe uh, maybe something like uh, this color so I'll try to put this color over here and let's see hmm. it will not look good in the but it's okay so I'll put FFFF here and then over here I'll put it to maybe something like this so I'll click on test on device I'll send this one and click on test and we wait for a few minutes I mean a few seconds campaign is ready for testing I'll open my app again and we wait and we wait and we should receive the message um, in a few seconds and I close it right close it again and I'll open the app and there we go so the background is blurred automatically but I don't know why uh, the subscribe button did not appear yellow I mean the text inside the subscribe button did not appear to be yellow I don't know why probably you can try to test on device again and then let's see close this I'll open this again let's wait hmm something is wrong inside this one I don't know let's try to do it with black itself and let's see so again this is in beta version that's why I said that you should never use anything in beta in your production app right that's one of the reasons and you can see why and I'll click on fire message again or I'll open my fire message app again and let's see and again it's not working so let's bring this one back I think they have a bug in there uh, this uh, in-app messaging uh, button system I guess so probably they're working on it or something so anyways uh, this is how the in-app messaging works so this is how you test uh, you can do something like welcome subscribe uh, subscribe to my channel and subscribe why am I doing double B because the keyboard is not working properly maybe yes google.com and then you can click on next if you don't want to test on device and you want to send it as a proper uh, uh, in-app message you can click on next and then you can select the campaign name I will do test and you can optional all of these are optional uh, I mean this uh, this is basically optional your customers or your users will not see this this is for your internal teams or, or for you to uh, have a tag on it right and then you select your app this is the app and then again you can set it something like more uh, uh, filtered criteria if you want you can do that as well and then click on next and you can schedule it when you want and then for how long this will be visible so there is a possibility uh, like in push notification you send a push notification now and on 100 devices maybe your app is installed on 100 devices and 
all the hundred devices receive the push notification but there are, there are chances that only two or three people might open it at the given period of time um, and then later on um, they cleared their notification and they opened your app and they did not remember what was the notification all about right in that case something like this is very useful wherein you can send an in-app uh, message and this will be visible only uh, so you you can send a push notification great deal out there in your app and then user opens your app maybe after four hours and there is an in-app message that user opens and sees a pop-up saying that oh you have something like this offer going on inside your app and you can have a start and end date so it will be visible to the users for next four days but once the user has seen it once the device has already received it that user will not receive the same uh, message again right so it's basically if you set it for two to three days so within three days maybe all the hundred people who have installed your app they will open the app within uh, two to three days and then they will definitely see something or some offer over there right so you can set it up over here once per device for this campaign or you can customize this as well click on next and then what do you want you want it to be uh, if you want to track what happens when user clicks on it you can do that as well and then you just need to click on publish and then you just wait and the app will be i mean the campaign will be sent out to the users so that's it guys for firebase in-app messaging it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward just add the cocoa pods add the google service make sure your app is communicating with firebase and you're ready to send the in-app messaging uh, from firebase to your application so if you like the video guys please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel share the video with your friends and let me know in the comment section what more content uh, you need in terms of tutorial uh, ios or tvos and i'll try to make videos for them as well so i'll see you in the next one until then bye bye